So you guys know that Turkey absolutely must rein in Azerbaijan over the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, right? I started recording this video almost a month ago. In the intervening time, and especially this past week, the message that I convey here has become extraordinarily more important. As recently as September 19th, just a few short days ago, the Armenian civilians of Nagorno-Karabakh lived under a very delicate, very fragile fiction that they had their own government and that they were protected by Russian peacekeepers. Over the past 72 hours, that fiction has disappeared, which makes it all the more important that Turkey does everything in its power to convince, bribe, or force Azerbaijan to protect these civilians. I apologize for the disjointed nature of this video, but it's important to get this information out and get it out now. This video will attempt to explain what has happened in Nagorno-Karabakh and what is at stake now. I am going to talk about a crisis that's been frankly going on since December of last year, but it is getting worse and it is not improving and i feel compelled to bring people's attention to it it is time to pay more attention to nagorno-karabakh and at this point what azerbaijan is threatening to do is starve to death a population of 120,000 people as many as 120,000 people that may be high but still tens of thousands 100,000 people being starved to death by Azerbaijan. I think it's critical for me to say this because if you recall my coverage from 2020, I am not your typical Western, like, rah, rah, go Armenia, like, you know, only using Armenian diaspora information guy. In 2020, I never support any war. I did not support the Azerbaijan war. But what I did point out in 2020 and believe very firmly is that Armenia was more at fault in the conflict in 2020. What's happening now is not what was happening in 2020. At this point, I don't believe you can hold the Armenian government responsible for anything because they're not in any control in this territory anymore. They lost the war three years ago. But even if the Armenian government is responsible for the current conflict, if you can blame some bureaucrats or some politicians in Armenia, it does not matter. It does not matter to the 100,000 plus people that are completely under the control of Azerbaijan and may be about to be starved to death. This is a tremendously complicated conflict. Uh, I'm going to put in here uh, clips from 2020 that explain what was going on in 2020. As you watch this, remember that 2020 is not 2023. It is a very different situation now, which I will talk about at the end of this clip. This is Nagorno-Karabakh. It is home to roughly 150,000 Armenians. In Soviet times, it had an autonomous political organization within the Azerbaijan Republic. Azeris hate this, but most of the world seems to agree that some sort of Nagorno-Karabakh autonomy makes sense. But that's not the only Azerbaijani territory that Armenia occupies. With the very name we use to refer to this conflict, we have minimized the suffering of the people who used to live here. In doing so, we minimize the largest post-Cold War ethnic cleansing you have never heard of. The lowest estimate I have seen, compiled by an Armenian researcher, holds that 364,000 Azeris were forced out of these regions as Armenia won the war in the 1990s. The New York Times puts the figure at 600,000 people. So that's two to four times as many people as live in Nagorno-Karabakh today. These territories have been converted to a barren wasteland as its ancestral owners languished as refugees elsewhere in Azerbaijan. Armenia's ethnic cleansing of these Azeri territories is not an atrocity that happened before your grandmother was born. This was happening when I was in high school in the 1990s. Just as the world agrees that Nagorno-Karabakh has some sort of right to preserve its Armenian character, the world very much agrees that the surrounding territories belong with Azerbaijan. This has been the basis of every peace deal proposed over the past 30 years. And crucially, this was the basis of the 1994 ceasefire. For decades, Armenia recognized this. Over the past decade, they have stopped. 
Some kind of corridor between Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh was likely always going to be in the peace deal. But now the Armenians are settling more of the ruined towns and fields outside of Nagorno-Karabakh, in a clear indication that they're building towards annexation of all of these Azeri territories. Honestly, looking at the situation this way, it's possible to see Azerbaijan's new offensive as legally justified. The really key thing here is that 2023 is not 2020. And I think it's entirely possible that the Turkish government, that the Turkish public may still be uh, laboring under the belief that it's the incredibly unjust situation that existed in this territory from the 1990s until 2020. That is not the situation anymore. Azerbaijan, much more powerful than Armenia. In the 1990s, Armenia was much more powerful than Azerbaijan, but because of 30 years of petro wealth, Azerbaijan is now much more powerful than Armenia. In 2020, Azerbaijan started a war to correct this injustice and they won. Uh, Armenia has been cleared out entirely from the provinces that were ethnically cleansed by Armenia in the 1990s. Azerbaijan won. The question now is not what happens to the issues between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Those have largely been settled. The second Nagorno-Karabakh war took place over 44 days in 2020, and Armenia lost entirely. All of the occupied territory it once held in Azerbaijan is now back in Azeri hands. The war ended when it seemed like the Armenian enclave within Azerbaijan was about to be conquered entirely, prompting Nagorno-Karabakh and the Armenians to sue for peace. The agreement was that the Armenians would be allowed to live with some degree of autonomy Economy, not fully settled at that point, within Nagorno-Karabakh, protected by Russian peacekeepers. This was actually a very elegant solution from the Azeri standpoint. They got complete victory, and the Azeri dictator could say that it wasn't his fault that they didn't take Nagorno-Karabakh. It was the international community and the Russians. And that also saved both Azerbaijan and their Turkish sponsors from the very real risk of committing a horrific war crime, forcing those Armenians out. It was a pretty good solution for everybody. The problem here is that the dictator of Azerbaijan, and he is a dictator. He is not just a, a president who keeps winning elections that uh, Europe and the United States don't like, as we have in Turkey. The guy in Azerbaijan is a hereditary dictator who has won everything that he needed to win. And now he thinks he can just push it further and further and further. And he is risking, in doing that, hanging an incredible crime around the necks of his people and also the Turkish people, because I think the connection between Turkey and Azerbaijan is often overstated, but both the Azerbaijani and Turkish leaders love to talk about it. So this crime that may be about to be committed will be hung around the necks of Turkey and Turks as well. Azeri dictator Ilham Aliyev's almost complete victory in 2020 was not enough for him. What little legitimacy he has is based on his decades of fighting Armenia and fighting Armenians. Much like the US security establishment after the Cold War, he doesn't want to stop fighting a politically profitable war just because it's over. Using the distraction of Vladimir Putin's idiotic invasion of Ukraine, Aliyev started to put more and more pressure on Nagorno-Karabakh across 2022. In December of 2022, he opted to completely shut off the Lachin Corridor. This is the vital source of humanitarian supplies and really anything that Nagorno-Karabakh wants to get from Armenia. It was closed down first through uh, variety of ruses, and then quite directly by the Azeri military. That's where things stood in August when I started recording this video. Then, earlier this week, in a not-too-surprising surprise attack, Azerbaijan launched an all-out assault on Nagorno-Karabakh. What was left of the autonomous government and security forces capitulated quickly. Azerbaijan is now in complete control of this territory, and complete control of the lives of the tens of thousands of people who live there. Armenia has lost, and the Armenian leader is eagerly talking to the Azerbaijani leader from like a position of subservience. This war is largely over. The question today 
is the 100,000 plus people in Nagorno-Karabakh entirely under the control of Azerbaijan and at risk of being chased out of homes their families have held for at least a century, if not for centuries? Uh, I would not use this term yet, but people in respected people around the International Criminal Court and in sort of international governance circles are now using the term genocide. I personally wouldn't use that yet, but I don't think it is a unfair way to characterize this. I think it is something that could become a genocide. And I think too many people in Turkey, too many people in Azerbaijan are thinking about this conflict as if it's the status quo from the 90s to 2020. Um, again, this is not about the Armenian government. This is not about past injustices. This is about 100,000 plus people that could be killed or ethnically cleansed that will hang over the heads of Azerbaijan and Turkey internationally for decades to come if this is allowed to happen. This is something to take very seriously. Now, why am I blaming this on Turkey? I'm not blaming this on Turkey. Why am I saying that it's Turkey that has to step, and, step up and do something about this? I'm saying this because, unfortunately, absolutely nobody else will. The, the, the sad fact is that Azerbaijan, thanks to a number of geopolitical factors, has gotten itself into a position of such privilege that while the European Union and the United States will have endless meetings and try to coordinate positive action and this, that, and the other thing, they're never actually going to dictate to Azerbaijan's dictator and tell him that he needs to lay the F off. That's not going to happen because of the war in Ukraine. Russia traditionally had a huge uh, footprint in this reason. It was Russia that stepped in in 2020 after the Armenians had lost to defend that enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh. The Russians are too busy losing the war in Ukraine um, to actually exert any power here. Europe is too dependent now on Azeri gas because they've uh, stopped consuming as much Russian gas to really put the put the nails in on this dictator. The United States and Israel are too interested in Azerbaijan's potential as uh, potential for creating an, a, a horrific civil war in Iran. Iran is neighboring Azerbaijan and has all a large Azeri population. So the United States isn't really going to put the put the nails in. I think Turkey has to be the one. I think specifically. President Erdogan has to be the guy who calls up President Aliyev and tells him to just knock it off. Um, it's not that simple. It's got to be an ongoing process, of course. But I think that it is the Turks that can stop this horrific crime from happening. And it is a sad fact that nobody else is going to do anything about it. We've been hearing for decades, really for a century, uh, from Turkish leaders of all political stripes about pan-Turkism, this idea that Turkey has a special affinity with the Turkish populations in Azerbaijan and, and broader, more broadly into Central Asia. Um, well, now's the time when the rubber hits the road. If this is true, if, if Turkey truly has a, a leadership role here or a, a, com a communal role here uh, uh, for, the, for the benefit of all Turks or all Turkic peoples everywhere, um, well, stopping this horror from happening is the right thing to do. Um, just want to emphasize again, I am a pretty strong friend of Turkey. I think no matter who's in charge, I think that's been documented in my decade of videos here. I'm not some like Armenian diaspora alarmist. Back in 2020, when Armenian diaspora alarmists were talking about genocide, I was here to say, no, that's just not what's going on. What's going on now? is something that could potentially turn into genocide or large-scale ethnic cleansing. Whatever terminology you want to apply to it, what's going on in Nagorno-Karabakh, it's a horror. Um, you, whether you're living in uh, Turkey or anywhere else, you should know more about this. And I think that the Turkish government has to make this more of a priority and make settling this issue more of a priority because, unfortunately, nobody else will. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And have I mentioned recently that I have an email list? If I lose access to any of these platforms, it will be the only way for me to reach my audience. Please do sign up either at the link here or the link in the video description. Thanks.